Hello, hi everybody. It is Colleen with Chalk Couture. How's everybody doing tonight? Hopefully you are having a fantastic Monday. We are gonna come in tonight with projects using two of our transfers that are in the last chance section of my online store, which I will actually post the link to my online store below once we're done tonight's project, but I figured, hey, two's better than one, right? So let's use two of the transfers. So one of them is Build a Bunny that I've used before, and it's got cute little bunnies in here, which I'm all about right now. And then this one, which I have actually had, but I've never used it. I just had it in my inventory for forever and I thought, oh my gosh, I'm only here for the candy. Well, that kind of goes with Easter too because isn't uh, one of the things with, about Easter is with the kids and candy and all that. So I thought, oh, let's put the both together. Candy and bunnies, two of my favorite things. So since I have never opened this transfer before, we're gonna show you how it works from beginning to end with um, the steps you need to do for opening up your transfer for the first time. If you forget any of them, all the instructions are right there, right on the back of the transfer. So what we're gonna do first is take it out of the packaging, and then there are handy little cut lines right along where you're gonna go ahead and cut the different pieces out. So we will do that real quick. I'm just gonna do this one for right now because that's the only piece I need right now. I don't need candy corn for Easter. So I'm just gonna leave that intact for now and just take out the piece that I need. And I can't even cut straight with lines provided. That's how awful I am at cutting. So we'll get this cut out. It is a rather large transfer, as you can see, but when you cut out the pieces, it'll make it a little smaller and manageable. But don't be afraid of the big transfers, guys. It's easy if you take your time. So that's, oh, I just missed a little piece right there. And I missed, oh, I thought I missed it again. Alrighty, so this is the piece that I wanna work with tonight. This is the paper side of our transfer. This is the side that we do not want to return our transfer to. We wanna make sure that we return it to the shiny side, as you can see the shiny side there. So we always label the back here for candy. We always make sure that we label whoop, label the back of our transfer what it is so that we don't accidentally put our transfer sticky side on the paper side. We don't want to do that. So we always pull, especially with our larger transfers, and especially because it is super sticky when you first start or you first unpackage your transfer. They are super duper sticky. You can see it's sticking to my hand. So you just want to take your time and make sure that it doesn't fold onto itself. Don't panic if it does. So see how if you just take your time, so put the carrier sheet off to the side and use my one hand to help me get my other hand off. But if it does stick, don't panic. Just run with it to your bathroom and put it in a bathtub or hello Donna. Put it in a bathtub or your sink if it's a smaller one, if it's a smaller size transfer and run cold water and let it sit and slowly pry it apart. We don't want to uh, warp or distort our silk screen area. So that is why for the very um, first time you really want to go ahead and fuzz your transfer really well. And what I mean by fuzzing is I literally am taking our fuzzing towel, which are pretty stinking awesome if I do say so myself, um, and just putting some lint onto the back of the transfer to make it just a little less sticky. Especially because I am not using one of our chalk couture boards. So I wanna make sure, I, you know, the quality might not be quite as good, so I don't wanna have it be so sticky that I'm gonna pick up pieces of the actual surface on the back of my transfer. So I'm gonna do this a couple times, it's very important. Even if you are using your transfer and you've used it a few times, but if you're using it on glass, you really wanna make sure you're fuzzing it real good. So the one side of our cloth is for fuzzing, the one side is for cleaning our boards. It just gives it like a nice little um, 
buff to your to your surface if you use that side so I generally especially with this one because it's bigger I have to do it in sections but I generally fuzz about three times so we are on fuzz number two how are you Donna how's things going in New York I hope it's getting a little warmer for you today we had a beautiful day here most of the day it rained a little and now it's beautiful again so I will take that I'm tired of the rain now but I'll take the beautiful day part Okay, we are on fuzz number three, and we should be good. There we go. Okay, so set that on my lap. Now we can, it's still sticky, but not nearly as sticky. Remember my hand, I had to use my one hand to hold it down while I pried the other one off. It's not quite that sticky anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and just place my transfer. I'm going to try and kind of eyeball it and center it here. So I can see the edge of my board is right here and here. I feel like I'm pretty centered. So we are going to go for it. Because I want to put my little bunnies down here at the bottom. So all that I am doing is making sure I'm not feeling any bubbles in my silk screen area. Making sure I have a nice tight seal. If you have bubbles here in the in the uh, teal section, that's okay. But I can see that there might be a little, a little bubble here because I'm seeing in the light a little ripple here in my silk screen. So all that you want to do is kind of lift that back up and smooth it back down and that will help to get that out. Now, if you'd like to, you can use a squeegee for the same purpose. And since this is a larger transfer, I'm going to use my angled squeegee. So you can use this to also help get bubbles. And you'll hear it when you're pushing down with your squeegee. It'll make like that rice crispy sound almost. And you know you got a bubble out. I hear a little bit of Rice Krispie, so I'm thinking this was a good call. Oh yeah, there's a Rice Krispie sound. Okay, I think we got that bubble out. I hear some more. There was a couple Rice Krispies in my A. Cool, cool but sunny. I'll take it. Awesome. All right, so I think that that is good weather for both of us for today, Monday. Yay, I'll take it too. Okay, so now we are good. Now we've got that on there good. I'm not seeing any bubbles. If you'd like, you can hold it at an angle to the light just to see if you're seeing any little warping. Not warping, but like little bubbling, I guess I should say, in there, which I'm not. So I think we are good to go. Thanks, Donna. Oh, you're so sweet for sharing. Hello, Rhonda. I appreciate the shares because sharing is caring, as Jessica always says. So um, if you are coming in and you would be so kind as to hit that share button on the bottom left hand of your mobile device, I would truly appreciate that. Helps get the chocolate tour love out there. So I think for the top part, I'm gonna use buttermilk and um, this is one of my favorites. I always use this color, I love it, it's my go-to. Morning Sky, which was in our um, previous catalog, but I still love it, still use it. Two pretty colors that go pretty together. So I'm just gonna stir my buttermilk to get it to that nice yogurt-like consistency. If it's feeling a little stiff, what do we do? What do we do, what do we do? We add water, that's all you need to do. Spritz of water in there. Give it a nice good stir again. And now we're getting to that nice yogurt-like consistency. Perfection. Whoop, whoa, I just made a mess. I just slipped right outside. And this multi-tool is awesome for stirring your paste and for also getting into a little detailed work. So it's good to have one of these. How are you, Rhonda? I hope you're having a fantastic evening. So I'm just gonna whip out all the different tools that we have. So might as well show them all off because they're fantastic. These are little stirry sticks, which are awesome too. And they are great to also help you stir. If you don't happen to have a multi-tool, you can always go the way of the stirry stick. Spritz a little water. And there we go. Get that nice consistency. Then I'm going to do buttermilk for I'm only here for the candy. I mean, I'm only here for the, is where I meant to stop, in the morning sky. Now, let's flip that. Buttermilk on top, morning sky on bottom. Let's do that. Um, you might see me just kind of throwing these things off to the side here. I have my pan of water. I'm using my big pan because I've got a big transfer today. Um, my pan is off to the side and it's filled with water and we are ready to rock and roll. That is all the prep you need to do. Um, let's go ahead and use our angled guy here since we've got a bunch of words up top to cover. Since I had it out, 
might as well use it. Then it's getting a pretty good helping, if you will, of buttermilk. I'm just going to kind of spritz it around a little. Oop, I thought I just got it on my board. And then I'm going to just apply pressure and just pull over the letters. Don't need to worry too much about the silk screen area. Not, that's not what I meant. Don't need to worry too much about the teal area. No sense in wasting our chalk paste on that section because there's no silk screen there. I put way too much. So what I'm going to do is start scooping some of that back in. Let's get some of that back in here. Go back in. We want to keep every little bit. So I'm just applying pressure, getting any lines out, making sure all my letters are covered because I am notorious for missing the very top and the very bottom of my letters like I did right there on the H. Missed that little guy right there. And now we are good. So here is a tip because I don't want this to start drying on there, right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the pull down method. Okay, I just want to make sure I get all that chalk paste back in there and it's there we go. Now we got it and I got a little buttermilk on my finger and I'm just going to get that off in my pan of water off to the side. Had the little buttermilk on there, but you see it just washes right away with water. So while I'm talking, it's drying. So what we do, pull back. If I can get my finger in there. Okay. So I'm going to pull back only to the top of the word candy. When you're pulling your transfer, make sure that you are not pulling from the corners. You always want to make sure that you are pulling straight down so that you're not stretching out your transfer. And this I actually did push down probably a little too hard with my ankle squeegee, trying to feel for those bubbles. Probably got a little carried away because it is a little resistant. So there we go. We're going to stop right there because that is where we have chalk to. So what I'm going to do, because I am notorious for doing this, my paste is still wet sometimes and then I go and lay it down right on top of the word that I didn't chalk and then chalk gets on there. So let's avoid that by putting our towel down. When we are drying, I'm speeding up the process. Hello, Sammy Joe. I'm speeding up the process because we are live. So I'm just gonna help this dry a little quicker. But just be careful when you're doing this. If you still have half of the transfer on here, you don't wanna accidentally hit your dryer onto the transfer and warp it. It'll get like a, almost like saran wrap if you hate it, how it shrivels. We don't want that to happen. So I'm keeping my kind of heat keeping my heat tool away from the transfer as best I can. And this only takes a second to dry. If you don't have a heat tool, hair dryer works just as well. There we have it. That should be nice and dry. I can run my hands all over, not going anywhere. Now I can lay this gently, just let it flop. And you can see that it was on there pretty tightly, snugly because it starts to curl. No worries. We're going to take care of that. We will get that flattened right back out. But in the meanwhile, let's go ahead. I made a mess of my buttermilk. I'm going to close that because I don't want my chalk paste to dry out by sitting open for too long. I got more chalk paste on my hand. Let me dip it in the water again and get my paper towel and get that right off. No worries. And it comes right out of your clothes too. So no worries about that. Alrighty, so I think that, make sure my fingers are dry, we are still good. The tip of my word candy is all still nicely on the board. I actually see a bubble in my D because I pulled down. No, I actually didn't, but I'm going to smooth that out because I missed that earlier. So let's make sure we got that taken care of. I just caught the glare of it and I saw a bubble in there. Okay, now we can switch to a smaller one. Mm, do we want to do that? Do I have a bigger one? I have a bigger one. I know it's here somewhere. I've got a bigger one. Here we go. We'll make quick work of this. So I already added water to my jar, stirred it. It's got that nice yogurt-like consistency. Did that learn the hard way? Wait, what did you do, Donna? Hold on. Never happened. To oh, you burnt your transfer with your heating tool. Is that what you did? Yeah, fortunately, someone gave me a heads up about that before I did it. So... But I've ruined transfers other ways, so no worries there. No worries there. I've done it too. Okay, we're just getting this covered. I'm going back over 
to make sure I'm getting a nice thin layer, getting up any of that excess chalk paste, and then moving right along to my next layer. I see that dang bubble in that D. Darn it, I thought I got it. Not a big deal. Not gonna worry about it, not gonna stress about it. Gonna keep moving right on. It's chalk art, it's not always gonna be perfect. So you see that when I'm applying a little pressure, I'm actually getting some more chalk paste so that I can continue on with my next letter. Pretty cool, I don't wanna waste any chalk paste. I have had these jars for quite a while. You're probably sick of the same colors that I use because I love them so much. And I put back as much as I can right back into my jar so I can keep on keep on using them. All right, here we go. We're going to pull down now, finish out. I'm going to try not to pull too hard. So let's just, there we go. Come on, I'm almost there. Try not to have the board flap up and make a big loud bang. Okay, there we go. And yeah, that really rolled. I really pushed a little too hard, I think, when I was getting out bubbles. All right, right into the water pan, my transfer is going chalk side down so that the water can start doing some work for me. It's just sitting here doing nothing, so it might as well work and get out some of that chalk paste from my transfer. So I'm just putting it face down, sticky side up, and then I'll let that get to work. Okay, now we need to dry our hands again. I need another piece of paper towel. But look at that color combination together. That's why it's always my go-to. It's just scream spring and spring uh, Easter. And I just love these two colors together. Okay, now we will cover up that one. And we are going to move on to our bun buns. I always call them bun buns. Bun buns, bunnies. Dry that off. Look how perfectly spaced. Love the font. And I didn't have to do it. It was done for me because my handwriting is atrocious. So I love that. Love that. All right. We are going to move on and we're going to add a white bun bun. And possibly a gray bun bun. So I'm going to open up Storm just to have it handy. And I always do his cute little cheeks and his ears in our, um, and why do I always forget the color of this? Cherry Blossom. I should know that because cherry blossoms are beautiful and I do like to look at them. All right, let's get our Build-A-Bun Bun out. Here we go. This is already cut into pieces because I have used this many times. Let's see. I'm just going to pull them all out. I would love, if I had a board that was a little bit bigger, I would have loved to have put the pail, because then it would have looked like the little candy pail. I might still be, oh, yay, I can fit it. I'm so happy about that. I can fit it. I'm going to have the bunny, the one bunny that's looking up at the pail, like he's looking for some candy. Where's that candy? Where are you, stand up bunny? I can't find him now. There's a cute little clap. Here's our stand-up bun bun. Look at him looking at the bucket. He's trying to find that candy. We're going to front and center him. And what's really cute, I've seen um, on a, someone else's design, to take the little crates from um, the Build-A-Truck. Which, which one is that from? The Build-A-Truck, I want to say probably Fall Edition because it has the crates in it, I think. Don't quote me. So we could do that, or you could take the carrots and have them standing on carrots. So many different things you could do. So let's see, do I wanna do the crate idea? I kinda like the crate idea. If you're willing to hang in there with me for half a second while I grab the crates out, I'll show you what I'm talking about. I think I have them handy here. I just gotta quickly see if I can find them. I'm not gonna take too long, so if they're not right front and center, Oh, is that it? I found it. It's the shipping one. Okay. I found it. So it's the vintage truck add-on. The one with the Seaport Harbor shipping. Come on. I think that's going to look really super cute. Okay, shipping down here. Sorry, I'm making a lot of noise. 
And I don't think I've ever actually used the crates. Here they are. We're gonna put the crates on there. All right, we just upped our Annie to three different transfers now. So we're not obviously gonna put that adorable little seagull there. We're just gonna use the crates. So let's put this off to the side, put our crates here. And I think, I think, yeah, I do have that. I do, I do have that label. Just wanted to make sure. I'm gonna fuzz this super quick. Super duper quick. Put our fuzzing towel on there. One, two, three. And actually I did a workshop the other day and my girlfriend, Jackie, shout out to Jackie. Um, we did this, uh, she did this project and she used the crates too because I mentioned it to her, it came out super adorable. And I think she did her crates in like a brownish color. So I may, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna mix gray and white and make it like a, uh, like a grayish white color. So I'm gonna get some more starry sticks, put them in my gray and my white here off to the side. And I'm gonna take just a little tiny piece and drop some around here. I'm just gonna kind of give it like a two-toned effect. Not quite ombre. I forget what you call this. I'm having a complete blank. Okay, that, hopefully that's enough gray. Let me just do just a little more. Because when you do this, you can't put the chalk paste back in because I'm mixing now. Hello, Jessica Douglas Wilson, how are you? Okay, so we're gonna add a little bit of white here and there just to give it a little touch of white on our crates so that our bun bun can look at the bucket of candy. All right, squeegee time. I put way too much on there, I can see it already, and I think I see a bubble, but hopefully I can get that straightened out. I'm just gonna watch and not get the little birdie's feet, because we don't need um, our little seagull friend in this project tonight. We just want to have this so that our bun bun can reach the top of the bucket of candy. Okay, that's all I'm gonna do. Remember, I mixed. I can't put that back into my jar. So I'm just gonna take that right off with a paper towel, okay? Don't wanna accidentally lay that down somewhere and go to dip it back in, so I wanna do that real quick. So here's our crates, our multicolored crates. Bun buns! You see who's peeking out over here? My little bun bun. I gotta have my bun bun front and center watching me, especially when we're doing a bunny creation with all of our last chance items, right? Makes sense. Gotta have them. Okay, so we are gonna have our bunny. Oops, I don't think that's dry. Let me give that another sec, shall we? I think I like the brown and the white better. I probably should have gone more with a bark, but uh, it's okay, it's gray. Gray goes with everything that we've got going on here too. So the only thing I didn't think of, duh, of course I have to, of course, of course. Um, the only thing I didn't think of is what color should we do the bucket? I did not think of that. So let's think of a color that's gonna go with the color scheme that we've got going on right here. Why we quickly fuzz, fuzz, fuzz our bucket. One, two, three. Three fuzzes for our bucket. <sighs> set our bucket right near our crate so our bunny doesn't have to reach too far away. And this one does have a rather large silk screen area, so just, um, where's the squeegee? You can do, like set it down at the bottom and then just use your squeegee to kind of help it along and press down at the same time so that you are trying to get all those nasty bubbles out of there that we are not our chalking friends. That did not go very well. Let's try that again. I may have been off center, that might be why. Let's try and angle it a little this time, if I am off center. Okay, that was better. Just gonna tuck that down here at the bottom of my frame. Sorry if my big fat head is in the way. Hopefully it's not. I always forget that when I put the camera up high. All right, honeydew or kiwi. Oh, thanks, Jess. I have neither of those. So, but I do have lime, which is very, very similar. But I don't think I would like that. That's too Halloween-y. So let's think. 
I'm not ready to tap into the inventory yet, so I'm still using what I've got in my bucket. And I know they're older colors, but I refuse, refuse to just yet open up anything in my inventory because I want it in my customer's hands. So let's see. We have, no, I don't want to do that. I do have, well, that's a little too bright. How about the Cora Couture? Oh, that did not come out right either. Couture Coral. How about that? That was easy for me to say. That I think will go good. And I think that will look good. Um, well, I'm going to use the um, Cherry Blossom for Bun Bun's ears. Um, wait a minute. Does this Bun Bun have... Yeah, he has a, a little piece to his ears. So, yes. I think we're going to do Coral. And then we've got Gray Coral, the Blue. The, I think we've got a pretty good amount of nice pastel -y kind of colors. So, let's go with Coral. Let's get that coral ready to be used. So we're gonna give it a quick stir. That needs a little water help. We're almost to the bottom of our coral. But this will be plenty to do this cute little bucket. Now I could get really detailed and I don't wanna do it live because I feel like I've been on here for a little bit already and I don't wanna keep you guys for too, too long. I try to keep the lives, you know, within within reason so but I like to have the little detail actually I may still do it a little gray band in there would tie that together so I think I might try to do that um, so let's just keep this handy by our gray I mean yeah by our gray and we'll do this if it looks like my coral starting to dry then I might not oh I already ruined it on the bottom so that didn't work but let's try it at the top here if we can add that band of gray I got a little zealous with the squeegee there. I went right into that bottom band there. So let's try and take it right to here. There we go. I am gonna do the handle in just the coral too. So let's bring it right to there. Cause it's got a nice line here where it's easy to kind of see where it ends. So we could just add a little something to the bucket to make it look cute. All right, and then we'll flip it I just did it again. Never mind. Some of it went into the to the line that I was going to do gray. Never mind. Moving right along. Let's just get it covered at this point. And we're going to get all our excess off. I can always come back in and add a nice light a nice bright color over top or even um I could do something if I want. All that I would have to do is clean my transfer, let it dry, lay it back over top, and then I can just come in and add that detail, which I very well may do because I was, wow, that's really wet. That looks really cool. The way the light's hitting it, it looks really cool. Let's dry that real quick. It looks good with the blue too. I really like that. Now hopefully, I forgot to measure that because I'm putting Bun Bun on crates now. Hopefully his head's not gonna hit the... No, he's good. Perfect, yay, this is working out. All right, let's get our Bun Bun off. Bunny is labeled Bunny number one. And, and Bunny has been fuzzed many times, so I'm not worried about Bunny sticking. So we, uh, do we wanna kinda lean him? I think I kinda wanna lean him. I have him on his tippy toes because the white is not going to come out and his head is going to be on the D. All right, that's not going to work. I just spit on my board. Wow, that's embarrassing. All right, let's try this. Maybe if I lean, no, now he looks like he's leaning back. That doesn't look good. But I don't want him to be trying to not have it, I can see the other colors coming through the silk screen. Eh, if he's leaning back, I don't think that'll look too, too bad. There we go. I think he's gonna be a little bit over on the crate, but I think it should be okay. Let's give it a whirl, let's see what happens. Let's get that white stirred. And again, I am gonna um, just add a little spritz of water in here. My heat is still on, even though we really don't need it to be this hot in here. Okay that nice yogurt like consistency we are almost done our project guys it's coming out super adorable let's get some white on here we're just going to cover our bunny 
Don't worry about the silk screen. I mean, the, I keep saying the silk screen. Yes, worry about the silk screen. Don't worry about the teal section. All right, I'm going a little lighter, especially down here at the bottom because it's on top of the crates. And whenever we do layering, we go a little, because I don't want to pick up any of the crates when I pull my transfer off. We go a little lighter. Let's see, he's looking, he's going to look like he's leaning back a little bit, but I think it'll be okay. Oh my goodness, look how cute he is. I'm thinking cute. All right, this bun bun has a layer. So we're going to make sure he's good and dry so that we can add the little detail of the pink in his ears. But the reason that I decided to do these two last chance projects is because sometimes it's nice to think outside the box because if you see that it's, you know, I'm only here for the candy and they've got, um, you know, candy corn with it. It's not just for Halloween, right? You can um, do it for Valentine's, for Easter. It's candy. Candy goes with all of those holidays. So mix and match, guys. It's a lot of fun. I love to mix and match. All right. Um, I don't want to put the eggs on top because it's saying candy, not eggs. But I'm looking for the top layer, and I love how they're labeled. So bunny two, and then you find his layer. It's got to go through all these. Ooh, some bunny loves you. Where is... Okay, so here, which bunny was that? That was bunny number one. So I need to... And here's bunny two ears. Here's bunny one. This is the bunny I want because if you look, it matches up perfectly to give him a cute little pink bunny. I'm going to give him a cute little white cottontail and pink in his ear. So we have what we need. Now we can go ahead and match them up easily because they're labeled so nicely for us. And you'll see how cool this is, how it matches up. So bunny one layer is on there. Thanks, Jess. I think she's adorable too. All right, so we just, usually what I do is la uh, layer or line up the belly. So once I get the belly lined up, then the ear should follow. So you just have to make sure you're right on the right angle. So let's just slide it down until I feel like I'm on the right angle. That looks pretty dang good. His ear is perfect, his belly's perfect, and his tail's perfect. We are good to go. So, oh, I need to add water and stir. I don't think I did that to my cherry blossom yet. Let's do that real quick. The actual putting of the chalk through the transfer is like two seconds, but the prepping is like five minutes. And the cleanup is like 10 minutes. That's so crazy. But isn't that always the way when you're working with art, when you're creating? The cleanup is always so much longer. All right, so we're gonna do his belly and his ear in pink, but I'm gonna give him a white bunny bunny tail. So we're just gonna cover this in cherry blossom. Go a little heavy, I'm not, because it's the second layer. I'm not gonna go over too, too much to try to get any excess off. It's okay that I'm leaving a little chalk behind on this guy, it's only a little bit. Now we've got that one. I'm going to go and grab another little squeegee so that I can do his little cottontail, which his cottontail is going to be a little bit on the crates, but we'll see how that comes out. Okay, again, not going too, too hard. I'm actually going a little liberal and doing a little more than I normally do of the chalk paste on there, just hoping that it comes through, which it should. Okay, let's see. Oh, he's so cute. Look at his pink little belly. Let's get that dried and his cottontail came out pretty good. Oh, I have a camper. Alrighty. How adorable is that? Oh my goodness. There, I think I saw some cute little flowers, which got me to thinking. Where were they? When I was going through stuff. And I was thinking that would look super adorable, maybe on the bucket. What do you think? Let's do some cute little white flowers. Yep, flowers. Then I'm going to put some cute little white flowers on here. Thank you, Donna. 
I appreciate that. It's actually coming together. So I'm hoping that, oh, I'm going to fuzz this because I never used the flowers before. I'm kind of hoping that my run of bad luck with last week's lives is over and we're starting Monday on a good note. Things are going pretty according to plan today, so I'm kind of hopeful that we're going to have a good week of projects and no boo-boos. All right, one more squeegee. I shouldn't have thrown that little white squeegee in there, but I'll grab another one. And again, we're going to go light again because it's a layer. And just add some pretty flowers. And again, I'm leaving a little excess on there, not worrying about really scraping it off or squeegeeing it off, I should say. <gasps> look how pretty! Yay! Now, it did look like it started to pick up some of that, so I actually even went, probably should have fuzzed it just a little bit more. But I like it. I like how it came out. I might lay that down again and just add a little bit more white just to make that side, because this side looks good, this side looks a little lighter. That's super cute. And then I think what I might do is come in and add some more details on either side of him, maybe some grass, I was thinking, just to get some nice green in here. So we do have some, um, some different flowers and grass and things like that, so I probably will do that offline just to add some more details but how adorable did that come out guys i love it so let me just move i want to move these transfers out of the way because what i want to do is i want to bring my bucket in here and i'm just going to show you just a few smaller pieces and how to clean them so that we can use our transfers over and over and over again this bunny build a bunny is actually for me from last Easter. So I've used it um, many, many times and I like to make sure that my transfers are in good shape so that I can continue to use them as many times as I need to. So come next Easter, I can pull, pull out my Build-A-Bunny and make more bunnies on different surfaces next year and come up with different creative ways to put bunnies into things. So I've got all my chalk paste covered now. And I am going to slide my bucket. It's a rather large one, so I'm going to stand up and grab that real quick so I don't spill any. I'm going to bring it right to the desk and show you how all my transfers are in here in our pan. Letting the water kind of start to get some of the chalk out of there. And I'm going to grab a towel. And we're just going to spread that out right in front. Any old towel, dollar store towels, just some something, excuse me, something to um, put the transfers on. I, I don't recommend paper towels because when you flip it and it starts to get sticky, the paper towel is going to start to stick. So this towel, I just wash them every week. I have about five, six dollar store towels and I just keep washing them. It's okay that they get a little stained. So this is our board eraser and this is perfect. It comes in a two pack. And it's perfect for helping to get the chalk paste out of our silk screen areas. And it also, because it's a two pack, I keep one dry and I use that to clean any ghosting that I have on any of my chalkboards. Because when you are working with chalk, you will know that sometimes the chalk paste stains, especially the darker pigment it stain, uh, chalk. And it makes quick work of getting all the utensils clean too, which I love because I just kind of fill it with water, squeeze it right over and pull and all the chalk is gone. So it makes it nice and easy. Same with our squeegees. Just pull and it gets out all the chalk from all the little crevices. Because I cut my squeegees, these are the older squeegees and I cut them in half. So let me just pull out one more. Oh, you know what? I, mm, well, I was going to try to show you how to get the, the big here for the candy. Remember how I said it rolled because I had it on there pretty good? Um, let's, um, maybe I can get to that. If I can just get a few more of these out, out of the way, then I can probably get to that. But see how it's so nice and easy to get that chalk paste out when you leave it sit here for a few? Most of it's already out. And you'll notice too that sometimes with the darker pigment, I used a lot of pastels today, so it didn't really happen, but with our darker pigmented chalk, 
it will stain sometimes the transfers and that's okay. You're just wanting to make sure the silk screen area is clear. Let me try to get all my little squeegees out of the way. Okay, so oh, they're still floating in there. So you can see that it started to get most of, like the blue is pretty much gone in here. Now that once the transfer is submerged in water, it's not sticky, so there's no worries about it sticking onto itself in the water pan. So if it's hitting other transfers, so long as the silk screen, um, oh, wow, I just made a big mess, and I did it again. So long as the, um, the back of the transfer where it's sticky is submerged in the water, they won't stick to each other. So it's okay to pile them on top of each other. Just make sure you get it completely wet first before you do. Okay. So I'm going to leave that there for a half a second, and I'm going to get rid of these guys here in front so I can pull that out and show you how it won't be um, folding. So what we do is, once we get it out here, so I'm just going to, actually, you know what, I have another towel. Let me just slide these guys over down here, and then I'll bring another towel, and I just was trying to make sure they didn't fall. Let me get another towel. Okay, and I'll pull the big one out so I can show you what I'm talking about with it rolling. Whew, I made a really big mess. Okay, so I like to have it where I can just kind of pull it right out. So this is the sticky side again, which it's not sticky right now. That's the side we chalked on. So I'm going to just slide it out so that the sticky side is up. My desk is so tiny. It's a little difficult. It's still rolling a little bit, but not terribly. So let me move the water so I can show you. Oh, don't fall water. Okay. I'm sliding that down out of the way. All right. You can see I spilled some. So it is still curling a little bit, as I mentioned. So what I'm going to do is get some of this excess water from the back here off. I did use the board eraser to clean it. I still do have some, because I didn't really do a great job of getting it all off. So what I'm gonna do is come in with a disinfectant wipe. Because I've never used this one before, I wanna keep it in good shape. So I'm gonna use my disinfectant wipe and that's gonna actually help to get some of the fuzz from my fuzzing cloth off. So I start on the front side that I chalked. Okay, and I just take my disinfectant wipe and go over and see how some of it did stain some of the buttermilk, even though it's not a dark color. It did stain a little bit, but it's okay. My silk screen area is clear. Okay, so now that we got the front side and you can see the stickiness is kind of starting to come back a little bit, sticking a little bit to my towel. So then we flip it over to the back, which is the sticky side. And this is where we're going to end. So I'm going to try to get some of that chalk paste from the other transfer that hit it. Try and get some of that lint off. And get that whole silk screen area nice and clear. It's got my fingerprints all over it from when it was super sticky. And it will get less and less sticky as you use it because our transfers are guaranteed between eight and 12 uses. But like I said, um, I do get very many more, just as long as you're taking the extra step to clean them. If you're not using them on super, um, super, super fuzzy surfaces, or um, if you're uh, using it on untreated wood, that's another issue where you might get wood splinters on here. So always wax your wood. That's my go-to. Always make sure you're waxing your wood. All right, so let's let this sit for one second. I'm going to grab my carrier sheet. And you can see that some of the rolls started to kind of come out. But once it starts drying, you'll see when I flip it back over, see how it's starting to roll again? So what we do, we have it still on its sticky side. Stickiness is coming back. It's starting to stick to my hands. Okay. I would normally let this dry for just a few more minutes, but for the sake of not keeping you here too much longer, I'm going to show you. So we have this down. We have the back side, paper side. We want the shiny side to meet the sticky side. So I just kind of line it up on my towel. This is the best way to do it with larger transfers. It's not going to get on there 100% perfectly like it was when you took it off. But getting it on close is, is a win in my book. So then we just flatten it out, flip it over. Any bubbles that I have, now I can kind of come in 
and smooth it out like that because I don't want to really have any bubbles in here because I'm going to put this back in the carrier sheet and sometimes if I'm transporting transfers and they're laying on top of each other and you get these little bubbles see how there's a little bubble there it can you it can you can see that mark sometimes so I just try to get all of that out and do it right when I'm putting it back on its carrier sheet just take that extra time I know it's hard sometimes not all mine are on there perfectly all the time just depends on the time I have to do it too if I'm in a rush but I try to take the extra time when I can to get this on here good okay and you can just do the same from up here I just kind of smooth it out and once you have it on its carrier sheet and it's back on there for a little bit look it's not rolling anymore so no worries about that it's going to be good to go for the next time that I use it no problems at all if down here so see how it was starting to roll a little bit here so I just push it really hard with my finger and if you if they still feel like it's rolling on you a little bit, there's another trick. I can find one. Just take a paper clip. I mean, if there was designs down here, I'd be more worried. Take a paper clip and that will hold it down as well. Okay, and you could just leave that on there till it till it stays down. But I'm not worried if it curls down here. I was worried more if it curled where the letters were. But that's it. That's how to get it back on there. Make sure that it's laying flat for a little bit. You could even put a book on it if you wanted to, but I don't think that this is going anywhere. It's not going to start crawling again. We are good to go. Just making sure I got all my bubbles out. Make sure that line is gone. Perfect. All right, that is tonight's project. Guys, I thank you so much. That was a little longer than I had intended for it to be. So I think while I still have my pan of water here, I'm going to come in and look for some more little details of the grass and things like that and just add a little bit more details, maybe pop some flowers around, things like that, just to finish it off. And then I will post a uh, finished picture in the comments. Again, thank you so much for hanging in there with tonight's project. If you would be so kind as to hit the share button in the bottom left hand of your mobile device, that helps me to get the video out there to people to share the chalk Couture love. And um, if you are not already a member of my VIP group, I would love for you to be in there. It's not for designers um, because we I can offer specials in there, which um, uh, unfortunately designers can't take advantage of that. They are probably running their own specials in their VIP group. So um, if you'd like to be in that group, just type VIP below. And if you think you can make these awesome creations with the super easy Chalk Couture transfers, pastes, inks, accessories, everything that we have, and you would like to make money beautifully, just type join below, and I would be happy to reach out to you. Have a great night, and I will talk to you all later. Jen, Renee, hold on. Jen, Renee, this was the chalk craft I was telling you about. Oh, yeah, Joanna. If uh, Jen, Renee, if you go back and watch from beginning, um, you can see the steps on how easy it is to do creations, and um, if you are interested in becoming... Uh, part of the group. I'd love to have you. Just hit the like button and um, love to have you as part of the group. Have a fantastic evening. I will see you guys later. Enjoy. Be safe out there. Bye.